Hello and hi. Happy 420. Welcome, welcome, welcome to becoming a smart cannabis consumer, learning how to purchase recreational cannabis in Illinois. I'm John Day Scott, and I'm an instructor for Chicago Normal, a supervisor at Mission Dispensary, and the Illinois chapter president for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. I am so excited to be presenting this to you as Illinois has become recreational in less than a year ago, 2020. It hasn't even been six months. So there's a lot to learn about purchasing as a recreational consumer in this state. So this is a small homage to the yesteryear of cannabis, what our elders and historians and, well, anyone who knows about the history of cannabis knows that the picture on the left is what it used to look like. Classic land race strains such as Colombian gold and Thai are strains that are used to hybrid and make new strains, many of which are available in markets today. And they may look a lot like the picture in the center or on the right here. Rarely will you find a large amount of seeds or stems and lets it shake. And I want to point that out now because we will later talk about weight and prices and things like that. So cannabis is cultivated to not have all of the extra that you don't need, once again, unless it's shake, which is another term for cannabis that includes the seeds, stems, leaves, all trimmings of the plant. So as far as the history of cannabis, I won't get into it. This is really just a model to show how far back cannabis dates when it comes to usage. All the way back to before 2700 BC, cannabis has been used for medicine, religious and spiritual practices, the economy, and hey, even in America, there was a time where it was illegal to not grow hemp, which is cannabis. So the plant plays a rich woven role in our history. And in Illinois, the history continued in 2013 when a medical cannabis program was developed. So this program afforded people who registered with the Illinois Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis Program, if I said that correctly, um, afforded them the usage of cannabis as a natural alternative to their current treatments for debilitating conditions. Later down the line, that program was made permanent, stemming from a pilot program, and it helped greatly in contribution to the efforts to legalizing cannabis on a recreational stage, which happened on January 1st, 2020. So as cannabis modernizes, so did the prices. That's right. And Illinois is a state that gets their coin, honey. So new cannabis purchasers may be used to certain prices they've either seen on the street or maybe other markets such as Vegas or Denver or LA. Understand, we are only four months into legalization. Supply is low, demand is high, and you know what that means prices. So with modern pricing structures for just about any item, the same goes for cannabis. And people are noticing it's in the pockets hard. I mean, the average eighth, for instance, may cost anywhere from 30 to 45 on the market. When I was a street pharmacist, <laughs> I recall my eighths were like 25, 30. And today, you could easily see an eighth of an ounce sold anywhere from $50 to $75. 
plus tax. Yes, plus tax. But why? Tax. Did I say it again? Can I say it again? Tax. Um, rent for the dispensary itself. Employee payroll, license and legal fees, security, and that is to name a few. In addition to that, it's important to understand that cultivators also have not been just growing this crazy amount of cannabis because they only had to supply a certain population all the way up until, boom, 2020, of which they were licensed to grow more and extend their resources. So we're going to, to experience a shortage, which equals higher prices. Um, but just like other markets, we're hoping that fluctuates. I'm praying it fluctuates. <laughs> and we'll start to see um, prices come down. Something that you also hopefully will see in the future, but not necessarily right now so often. Smell jars, samples, free swag, displayed cannabis. Um, you may have experienced these items either if you were a medical cannabis patient and your dispensary had all of this stuff when they first opened or maybe in another state at another type of cannabis business. However, right now in Illinois, the average dispensary may not have all of these items simply due to supply or policy. Displayed cannabis, you know, the big old jars, you're not gonna see that at all, anywhere. Um, can, customers cannot have access to touching the actual unwrapped product in any Illinois dispensary. And that really is for the safety and health of you, the buyer. Another thing, nothing is weighed on site. Nothing is packaged on site. Pre-rolls are not rolled in the corner. You're not going to see the cultivation room right behind the register or, you know, it's not so in your face the way that it's portrayed on TV or once again in other markets. When a product is delivered in large batches to a dispensary, it is already packaged, measured, and labeled. So remember, this ain't that. All right, I, I, I beg of you to just keep that in mind when you visit a dispensary and please be patient with the employees. We know what you're expecting and we wholeheartedly relate to the fact that you would love to see the product and touch different items. But this ain't that. No, no, no. Let's take a look at this picture here. So. For those who have not visited a dispensary ever, what we're looking at is a typical small dispensing section of maybe a dispensary in a market like Denver or LA that is recreational and they do give access to products to people who are purchasing before they actually make the purchase. These large jars, most likely someone will come in and they'll be able to open the jar and smell it. Afterwards, they may wanna choose an amount, a measured amount of how much of that product they want. If so, the agent, cashier, or a bud tender measures that amount of flour out right there in front of you. <laughs> then it's labeled then it's priced, and then it's sold. But this ain't that, all right? In Illinois, the menu is already pre-populated with the pre-packaged and pre-priced items on a menu that you select. You get to the register, give them your cash, you get your product, and you leave. Now, the menu here comes from a dispensary I've actually visited a few times, a native 
Roots in Colorado, a wonderful dispensary. And as you can see, excellent prices. Pre-roll joints for $5 all the way up to top shelf, meaning higher THC or maybe grown in a more quality of a process. It can mean a number of things, um, more heavily desired even. Um, $45 eights when here in Illinois, quote top shelf or not, you starting out around $50. So <laughs> hopefully you can catch a sale. So don't expect that immediately in Illinois dispensing companies because right now, that supply means everything. And until we get it up, that price will stay up. Speaking of products, <laughs> we are so used to cannabis being sold in the form here, and that is no longer a factor in dispensaries. Gone are the days of the little plastic baggies. I mean, salute, salute. I, I, I love those baggies, they're a part of my heart, but you will not find cannabis sold this way. The first reason those bags are not smell proof, they are not smell proof and they are also not child proof. So that's one of the main factors when it comes to cannabis packaging. Another thing, there are no weights, measurements on the package, no contents of cannabinoids or ingredients, no expiration date. Yeah, cannabis expires, y'all. And so in a dispensary, your product is going to look a little different no matter what type of cannabis product it is. Here we have flour, no longer in the baggie, but in a plastic sort of medicine prescription pill bottle form. Now, this one is see-through. You can see the flower through it, but a lot of cultivators choose to have opaque or completely frosted or non-transparent containers because the less light to the cannabis plant, the fresher and better smoking, better tasting it remains. This genetic makeup doesn't get all jumbled and it dries out a lot less quickly. Pre-rolls, same thing. Not only do they come pre-packaged, they come pre-measured. So you can't say, oh, I just want one or two if the package doesn't have one or two. Usually pre-rolls come in singles or packs of five and sometimes even packs of seven or 10. Edibles, chocolates, gummies, all the way down to soups, energy shots, and mints. You can, you can find just about anything in edibles. These will come prepackaged also. And when I say prepackaged, I mean wrapped. Uh, there's not gonna be any see-through windows, even like the flower. Everything will be completely sealed and protected. And that's for your health and safety. Here we have RSO. That is a concentrated cannabis oil. Great for my post-op patients and people suffering from anxiety and pain. Vape pen, vape cartridges, you all have seen it. This comes from extracted cannabis oil. Topicals, look at that bomb. Just looking at it makes you feel good, don't it? That, that right there, woo. Good topicals means good relief for pain, I tell you what. And then we also have tinctures, one of the oldest forms of medicine. A lot of people prefer tinctures these days because it's not smoking and it's still considered inedible on some markets, but you don't have to worry about sugar and fat content and ingredients that you may be allergic to. And of course, some live sugar, which is another type of concentrate, but used to consume by form of vaporization, just like cartridges. Difference is it doesn't come in a cartridge. You yourself and a device heat the product to an appropriate temperature so that it vaporizes and you consume that way. And that's another form of vaping 
or dabbing concentrates. See, a little quick lesson for you there. Speaking of a quick little lesson for you there, let's talk about what cannabis is. The best way to make an educated pur purchase in a dispensary is to know what you're purchasing. And cannabis is a whole science course in itself. But since I don't have time, and this isn't one of my four to five hour certification courses, <laughs> I'm not going to bore you all with my favorite part, which is the cannabis sativa plant. Um, but know just a couple of key things. For instance, cannabinoids. These are the chemical compounds found in cannabis. You may know them as THC, CBD, CBG, CBN, but the two main ones are THC and CBD. Now there are over a hundred cannabinoids, what, say it with me now, cannabinoids. Some people say cannabinoids. You can say that too. I say cannabinoids. They have so many different functions. And because the cannabis plant, like I said, can contain up to over a hundred of them, these different combinations are unique in the way they deliver relief to the body. And they're unique in their combinations when it comes to each type of cannabis. So one type of cannabis may be high in THC or CBD. Another type of cannabis may be high in CBN, which puts you to sleep, but still has a good amount of THC for pain relief. Oh, it gets good. So. When we talk about the other factors of cannabis, we have to remember that it's still a plant and plants secrete oils and those oils are called terpenes. Cannabis has them, flowers have them, fruits have them, herbs have them. And in addition to providing medicinal benefits, they add to the taste and smell that gives each type of cannabis or strain its unique characteristics speaking of strain that is another term for the unique name given to identify types of cannabis so let, let you know what I, I i've got to stop i'm gonna put these notes aside listen to me let's get this straight right now loud exotic gas are not strains they are not types of cannabis. They technically don't exist. <laughs> they are all slang terms. Just slang, none but slang, only slang. So we love when people come in asking, yo, I need an ounce of loud. We'll let you know. We have strains that will come off as loud or strains that you may find exotic. Some that are definitely, you know, kicking like that gas, but uh, there are no strains or no types of cannabis that are labeled these in, in, in these forms. However, strains are categorized by the way they affect the body. And even though these terms are starting to progress themselves, right now cannabis is categorized into three different groups. Sativa, uplifting, energizing, good for focus, gives you more of that head high, really cerebral, often psychoactive. Indica, in the couch or stuck, relaxing, sedating, gives you more of that body high where, you know, you may not always want to go to sleep, but you definitely feel the just the chill, like, mmm, I don't need, I, I can't even put it into words. And a hybrid is a mixture of both. But remember, currently, <laughs> cannabis is mostly all hybrids. I would, I would give or take at least 80% of all strains are technically hybrids. And that's because hybrids are needed to make new strains crossing two strains to make another one, that's a hybrid. So often you will find sativa dominant hybrids or indica dominant hybrids 
rather than just straight sativa or indica strains. And that's okay because it gives the buyer more of a choice and how they want to feel after consumption. Now, when we go into a grocery store, whether or not we have a list, we usually come out all right. You know, if, if we miss a couple of things, you don't press, press us too much. And, and if we need something really bad that we miss, we could just run back in and get it. Cannabis is a little bit different. You want to really focus on what you're looking for because some dispensaries do not allow a revisit that day once you buy bye-bye so ask yourself before entering a dispensary what are you looking for trying to get high have a good time great having a lot of pain can't get to sleep okay let's talk about it but Coming in and saying, I just want to buy some good weed may lead you into purchasing something that you really don't want. And later we're going to talk about price, but I've already warned you that Illinois don't play. So you want to be conscious of exactly what you're trying to get from cannabis. And like I said, it's categorized by its effects on the body. Different strains have unique genetic makeups, which leads to different effects, especially if you're seeking something specific. Terpenes, cannabinoids, even method of cultivation affects how a strain will make you feel versus someone else. Everything from your weight down to the time of day can, can be a factor in how the body responds. So whether sativa, indica, or hybrid, all strains have a high or low percentage of THC. So if you have maybe a strain you really, really like called, I don't know, I'll throw one out there, Lavender Kush. And usually when you purchase it, it's 22% THC. That's a pretty average amount um, in Illinois. The next time you come back to the dispensary, that lavender kush is 18%. Is it still lavender kush? Yes. Does it still have the terpene profile? Most likely. Um, is it still going to affect you in the way that it affected you the last time you consumed it? Possibly, but maybe not. The reason being is that cannabis is a very delicate plant easily stressed and the slightest change to the environment, the growth process, the nutrients can affect how it tests out in the cannabinoid field. That's right. So when it is tested in a lab, whatever comes up can be different every single time. And that's okay. It's a plant. Just remember, once you find something that works for you, try to find out what about that strain makes it beneficial and not the strain itself. Why? The next time you come back to the dispensary, the strain may not be there anymore. I know you love that lavender kush, but it takes about two to three months to grow and cultivate and properly package that lavender kush. Maybe even more than that. So instead of Getting hooked on one strain, be open-minded to the characteristics of that strain so that you can know what to look for just in case your dispensary doesn't have it next time. So let's go back to combinations of cannabinoids, terpenes, and other factors of cannabis that will affect the types of cannabis you choose to purchase. White Harmony, I love that strain. It's a sativa strain, meaning it's going to give you energy, it's going to give you that focus, but it's not super high in THC. It's usually anywhere between, I've seen it low as 8% and as high as 14% THC. So it's generally pretty low. And then it's met with an almost even amount of CBD. So what is this strain good for? 
a slight buzz, like a real nice mellow afternoon, just want to chill buzz. And then relief, 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 calms the anxiety, helps with pain management, everything from nausea, epilepsy, CBD is what you need if you just want to get that balance back. Um, another example, Tangi. This is a sativa strain. Excellent for headaches. Sativa strains are known to get rid of that pressure behind the eyes and in the head. But if you're someone like myself that suffers from PTSD and high anxiety, you may not want something that strong to help jolt those already active thoughts. Now, Brownie Scout, now we talking, now we're talking. That's a very heavy indica that's usually high in THC, ranging anywhere from 22 to 30%. However, when you smoke a brownie scalp that's 22%, you may not get as heavy of the psychodelic cheek chin chong buzz, but I can almost guarantee you're going to get that good brownie scalp relaxing effect. What can lead to this not happening anymore? Da, 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 da. Consuming the same thing all the time. Your body starts to build a tolerance for that combination of terpenes, for those levels of cannabinoids. And trust me, you do not want to buy something that your body is saying, Tuh, next. <laughs> you want something that is going to continue to wake up your endocannabinoid system. Oop, just dropped a term on you. That's right, endocannabinoid system. It's the system inside of our bodies that reacts very positively to cannabinoids found in cannabis. You're welcome. Another example, edibles. Great option for smokers and non-smokers but it may not be the best option for people with unique stomach or digestion issues. Edibles, whether high in THC or low in THC, tend to have a body locking effect. And that can also hinder some people who, well, don't know how to handle that feeling quite yet and need to be physically active. So, Having high THC, having low THC, high CBD, types of terpenes, all of that is wrapped up in one strain. And learning what's best for you can open the doors to a wide world of strains that are just catered to you, all to you. It's all about you. Speaking of strains, let's talk about buying them. How much? How much do you want? You may be familiar with sizes available from maybe your street dealer, your urban pharmacist. However, in a dispensary, cannabis is measured only in fractions of ounces, which is still a system adopted from the open market. So you won't be seeing nicks, dimes, sawbucks, or dubs. You know, I remember when I was a um, open entrepreneur in the cannabis market. I, my Nick, my Nick sacks were basically whatever I could stuff in those little bags, that was a Nick and I just sold those. And that's one of the ways I started. A dispensary and cultivators cannot risk eyeballing the amount of cannabis sold per package. Everything is measured and this is how it's broken down. One gram, you're gonna get a couple of nice size joints or really healthy blunt or two or three bowls for my pipe and bongers. Eighth of an ounce, otherwise known as a KD, a Kevin Durant or a three five, that's 3.5 grams. A fourth or coda, a quarter of an ounce is seven grams. A half is 14 grams. And one ounce or a zip or an OZ 
is 28 grams of flour. Now remember, different strains have different weights. So if you have a strain, for instance, where the buds are really like dense, just chunky, just thick, ugh, you're going to get less per package, but it's still going to be the measurement on the package. Same with lighter, fluffy buds. You know, um, an eighth of one strain may be more than an eighth of another strain in the actual, you know, flour, the actual amount of the product itself, but the weight will still be what it says on the package. And I always encourage people to buy a scale and test it yourself. These are great visuals. Uh, shout out to Leafly and cannabis.info. Um, when trying to imagine cannabis sizes, these are really, really, really rough uh, comparisons simply because not all cannabis is going to have the same fluffiness, the same density of the cannabis in both of these pictures, but it's still great examples. So as you can see, a half a gram in proximity to a bottle cap and then if you kind of compare that to an ounce, now you can kind of visualize how much an ounce really is. And going into a dispensary that may, I don't know, have ounces on sale. Well, that's great, but I see how much an ounce is and I don't really want that much of this strain. On the right here, I love how this picture compares the cannabis to fruit. That makes it really, really easy, especially if you've never bought flour ever. So uh, a seven grammar, a nice medium size apple. Yeah, definitely, I'll, get, I'll give it that. An ounce, a nice size coconut, a pound. Now this is a, a, this is a small watermelon, y'all. All right, the, the small one, okay? <laughs> that's like, that's like the, the little supermarket watermelon, not the, the big watermelon. I just wanted to put that out there. But this is a great visual, both of these. So how much can I buy? Buying versus possessing. Two totally different things. And in Illinois, the law of possession goes as follows, up to 30 grams of flour, up to five grams of concentrate, up to 500 milligrams of THC in edibles or tinctures. With non-Illinois residents, just chop all those in half. Now, these are possession limits. Does this mean you can go to a dispensary and buy up to 30 grams of flour, Illinois residents? Maybe, maybe not. That dispensary may not have the supply to give every single customer the opportunity to buy their maximum limit. So these are possession limits. Your purchase limits will definitely be mm, dependent on your dispensary, the supply of the cultivator, so on and so forth. Taxes. I dreaded this part. I did, but we got to talk about it. Illinois is making it rain with this cannabis tax money. Let's see why. Less than 35% THC. So we're going to be looking at mostly flower products because anything that's less than 35% THC is going to be on average in the flower category, but there are also products in vaping and the concentrates category that are high CBD and low THC that would fit in this category of getting a 10% sales tax. Cannabis infused products or edibles are 20% tax. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, how come, how come they don't get, you know, as much as the flower and da da da, da? I understand. The reason is edibles do not have a percentage of THC, but rather a weight. So um, cannabis is extracted and used in edibles, and that's where it has to be transferred into weight so that it can be measured like any other ingredients in 
edibles. And so because of that fluctuation and any product, any product in a dispensary contains some percentage of THC, uh, because that cannot be broken down into a percentage for edibles, to the best of my knowledge, is why it is put in that 20% tax range. Pardon me if I did not correctly state that all of my advocates and professionals and those who further know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, any product that is higher than 35% THC is going to get the slap of 25% tax. You're going to get one of these taxes plus the local sales tax. So if you're in Chicago versus Joliet, everyone has a different local sales tax. You can call the dispenser you're going to and ask them, or you can check online. Remember, all dispensaries may not have the supply to sell you how much you want. Please remember this. Another thing, bud tenders, cashiers, all dispensary employees alike are so excited that you have chosen their business as your next place to purchase cannabis. However, everyone does not know everything, including yours truly. So please bear with us, have patience, and know that, hey, this is new for everybody. And as you learn, we are too. So if there are questions that just can't be answered while you're there in a dispensary, give us time. See if someone can follow up with you or do a quick Google search. And you never know what you'll find by doing a little self-research. Remember, this is something you're consuming, putting in your body. So the better educated you are, the better you will feel. Now, if you remember anything, before going to a dispensary, bring cash, bring it. There are electronic forms of payments that many dispensaries use, but if you've never been to one, or even if you have, sometimes you just don't wanna go through all that. Cash is quick and straight to the point. Bring it and bring enough of it because ATMs inside dispensaries always charge ridiculous fees. State ID, you will not enter a dispensary without one. Why? Because we have to prove you are 21 years of age or older. Right now with COVID-19, all businesses are suffering, whether cannabis or not. And that includes businesses that assist residents with renewing their licenses, both inside of Illinois and out. Therefore, many Illinois dispensaries have taken a step in simply verifying ID another way if it's already expired or simply accepting expired IDs that um, have only been expired for a certain amount of time or so on and so forth. So if you have an expired ID and are not able to renew it due to the closures of, well, everything, please, please, please contact the dispensary you plan on visiting and ask them their ID policy. I would hate for any of you all to make that trip and not get in because, uh, yeah, you won't get in. Um, and we don't want that to happen. Do not consume in public. Whether you get the cannabis from a dispensary, from your hood spot, from your connect, from the neighbor next door, I don't care. Do not consume in public. It is not legal. And as a Chicagoan, Chicago Police Department does not play. Illinois State Police does not play. You don't need to play. Do not consume in public. But most of all, have fun and be safe. Be safe. I know we're all tired of being cooped up in the house, but continue practicing safe distancing and healthy processes for leaving the house if you have to stay home stay home stay home um, and consume safely shout out to all my essential workers especially especially 
my dispensary workers because you are essential and are still out there doing the damn thing. Many thanks to the good folks at Chicago Normal, Minorities for Medical Marijuana, Elevated Education, Mission Dispensary, and Leafly. If you have any questions, any complaints, or any concerns, save it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Kidding. Contact me. John Day Scott here. My email's there. My Facebook's there. My Instagram's there. I am a blogger and I am excited to be relaunching my blog, Clear as Smoke today on 420 so this is the temporary address um i have some great content lined up it's so amazing to be back and i would like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today once again reach out if you need to speak out consume safely have fun let's all get through this together peace and bud